Hey everybody, the following is an excerpt from the monthly Roto Roundup, and if you'd like to see the rest of the Roundup, you can hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen, or if you'd like to know more about the game, you can follow the link down in the show notes. And with that out of the way, let's talk about The Lost Ruins of Arnak, The Missing Expedition. And uh, I've been excited about this one ever since I heard about it, folks, because The Lost Ruins of Arnak, of course, is a monstrously popular deck building slash worker placement game from CGE uh, that, you know, kind of cast us in the role of Indiana Jones style adventurers, um, you know, finding this long lost and forgotten island with a mysterious culture that has disappeared from the planet. And we are here trying, you know, not to loot and plunder, but to actually just research and study and tell the story of what of this um, mysterious civilization that is lost to time and it looks like all the pictures for the most part are just of the gorgeous art in this expansion but there are very very cool things that as adds like any expansion for a deck builder it adds a bunch of new cards very much appreciated it adds two new playable ca- leader characters uh, that um, the mechanic and the journalist that both have really cool new gameplay mechanisms tied in especially the mechanic who has literally a turn Turning mechanism gear wheel cog that upgrades over the course of the game. So it has a lot of really cool stuff uh, that just, if you just want more Arnak, you're going to be happy. You get these um, new cards, you get these new playable characters. But that's not what makes this special. And I can't believe, uh, right, uh, just, okay, there's just a bunch of stuff. What's really important though is, um, up until now, there has been a, apparently a print-and-play version that you could download solo campaign, where you could play a Arnak solo going through a multi-chapter storyline. They have taken that that was previously print-and-play, and now they have uh, bulked it up, given some extra chapters to it, a lot of custom art and whatnot, and turned it into a multi-chapter uh, campaign that you can play. Because we've got, um, you know, often... When you go and explore a new space, in the original game, hey, you just pick up a little reward tile. It gives you some stuff. It kind of soups you up, and you, know, and you can use them to get other bonuses later. But now, instead, often when you go and explore, there's a face-down card. And when you flip it over, you find yourself having to make a choice based on a storyline moment that happens as you play through this campaign. And the choice is always, hey, do I want a really good bonus right now that'll help me? Or instead... Do I keep this as a different type of bonus I can activate at any time I want? Like take an extra turn or um, you know, instantly defeat a guardian when you can't defeat one normally. Or do I just want to be able to draw some cards right now? And uh, all of these story cards are thematically tied to the story of you know us coming here to find the missing expedition that had preceded us. And there's clues left behind, and there's a rival expedition that we're racing against. Um, you know, so you kind of got like a nemesis, like Belloc from Indiana Jones. Although there, there's, there's no violence, there's no Nazis or anything like that. It's actually a very, it's more kind of like a friendly race, really, more than anything else. And the interesting thing is, every time you get one of these cards and choose, hey, do I want the instant benefit or the longer benefit, you take those cards and tuck them away under the main chapter that tells you what is our objective and what are our bonus objectives we can do to win when we're playing solo. And depending on what we choose, that will unlock additional bonuses for us in between the chapters. Now, that's all very nice. And you might say, okay, that's cool, Rado, but I don't care. I don't play solo. Why are you even talking about this? Because here's the deal. You can play all of this stuff solo, or you can play Arnak now as a two-player cooperative game. And that's what I wanted to see. I I was so excited to be able to get to share the experience and work with Jen instead of race against her playing Arnak. And I got to say, sadly, it's only for two players, but it makes for a great two-player experience that Jen and I have really enjoyed. We have only played the uh, first two, and we started on the third chapter. So we've and I looked through the book to see what all the other bonuses were. And here's the deal: every one of these chapters gives you new objectives you have to do that radically change. That make you play Arnak in ways you have never done before. That make you focus on things that you would normally ignore. Or weird combinations of objectives you have to do. And I love it. I think they did a really really nice job. And also they did a really great job of making it cooperative through a simple mechanism where every player gets, uh, or all two players, get a uh, an extra token, a carrier pigeon that on my turn if you are desperate for a compass and I've got more compasses than I need or I need a gem or whatever it might be I can say hey I will literally put it on a carrier pigeon hand the carrier pigeon and the thing to you and then you'll flip it over and now you've got two carrier pigeons that you could send two things back to me later on 
It's a simple little system, but it's enough to get us involved in each other's turns and really have a great time. And then in between missions, we, we track our progress on these little roll and write sheets, depending on what types of things we've unlocked, I'll get extra bonus cards, and it's really nicely done. I really like it a lot. And I got to say, I very much enjoy Arnak as a co-op game. I'm sad to say it's only for couples. It's only for two players, but it works great. My only complaint, it seems like, and I could be wrong about this, it feels like the game has gotten longer again. Now, Arnak is already a kind of on the long side for Jensen, my taste. And if anything, you know, the extra level of puzzling, hey, not now, not only am I worried about what I need to do, but I'm worried about what you need to do, and we're trying to coordinate our actions. It just kind of makes it, I mean, we still play, well, 90% of the game is exactly the same. We play for five rounds, it's a deck builder. Over time, more relics come out and fewer items are available. We can focus on research, we can focus on exploring. Everything works the same, but it's these new objectives that make us have to do different types of activities and um, that really mixes it up from game to game, but also forces us to play in really interesting, unique ways that sometimes slow the game down a little bit. Um, and I'm not complaining. Still had a great time. I'm happy to have it. I look forward someday to being able to play through the entire campaign, plus a nice bonus. You can skip to any chapter you want. You don't have to play through the storyline campaign. If you love chapter five, just jump back to chapter five whenever you feel like it, because that was your favorite objective to do. So it's done just about everything right. It would be even higher if they could have done it in such a way that said, hey, you know what? And when you're playing solo or co-op, you play four rounds instead of five. Something like that. But that's a minor complaint because I'm really very impressed by number 10 of the month. Um, Arnak. Lost Ruins of Arnak, The Missing Expedition. Okay. And thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference, believe me. But with that out of the way, if you'd like to see some more, over on the left, you can find a playlist of a whole bunch more Rotto Rapid Reviews. Up in the top right, there's the latest thing that's been added to the channel. And in the bottom right, you've got something YouTube recommends. Okay, folks, thanks for watching.